So there appears to be a difference. Uh, but does job satisfaction correlate with weight? And so then we have to introduce this idea of correlation. So um, we started to touch on it with association, subtle dif difference. Uh, when we talk about correlation, we're actually talking about a particular kind of relationship. Uh, well, often we are. And here's some definitions. What we have to be careful of when we talk about uh, correlation is that we don't mistake correlation for causation. And uh, this little cartoon sort of demonstrates it. Um, the idea that if you flip the axes on a correlation chart, you could come up with the conclusion that cancer causes mobile phones as opposed to mobile phones cause cancer. And so you just have to be really careful. Whilst you may see a correlated dependence between two variables, it doesn't mean that one is causal of the other because they could both have the same causal factor. The one might vary as the other one varies, but actually, the, cause, the causal effect could be, it could be driven by another variable to which they both correlate. The commonly used uh, measure of correlation is the Pearson product moment correlation coefficient. However, this really only measures linear association. So it basically measures the strength of um, a linear association. Can I draw a straight line relationship between two variables? And if it's not a straight line uh, dependence, although it will, it, it will produce values, um, again, the interpretation becomes limited. However, the degree of correlation is scaled between 1 and minus 1. So plus one is a positive correlation, meaning as one value goes up, another value goes up. Visually, I'll draw some axes. Visually, a positive correlation looks like that, as in the slope is positive. Positive. A negative correlation means that one. So these are my variables: so v1, v2. So as V1 go increases, so does V2. That's positive correlation. Negative correlation. As V1 increases, V2 decreases. A correlation coefficient of zero which means I've got there's no relation, no linear relationship, or no relationship. As V1 varies, V2 doesn't change. That's all I'm saying. If I say if that is um, the Pearson product moment correlation coefficient is often uh, written as R, so that line would be R equals zero, and this one maybe R equals. Plus, uh, minus 1, say, so, and that one might be r equals minus plus, rather, plus 1. You can tell it's getting towards the end of the session. My brain's fried. Um, it doesn't mean plus t, it's plus 1. And you might have um, values in between. So, if you've got a line there, that might be R is equal to 0.5, for example. And so the, the larger the value, up to 1, plus 1, the greater the degree of cor correlation. Or if it's minus 1, you've got a very strong correlation. Or in fact, minus 1 is perfect correlation. But it's extremely widely used. And it's the basis for linear regression as well which is fitting straight lines through data. And it has an equation that you should not remember because it would be a waste of precious um, brain space. 
but it, some people find it helpful. I find it helpful in understanding how the, how the thing works. If that helps you understand what it, how it works and how it's computed, then by all means use it. But I would never expect you to regurgitate um, that. Uh, and there's also, these uh, are uh, blatantly ripped from Wikipedia, uh, but they're quite a good demonstration of diff how the different correlation coefficients, so these values up here, they're the correlation coefficients, and just how the, the value of the correlation coefficient um, would vary with different looking data. And you see, when the data's not, co when there's no correlation, you can't tell in that data cloud whether um, the V1 increases, anything could happen to V2. There's just really no relationship between the variables. But you can have funny shapes of data that also have um, cor uh, zero correlation or correlation. So you just have to be aware of how the, uh, the, the correlation uh, coefficient, and again, it's another reason to, to visualize data, because you get a number out, but it, you have to be a little bit careful about how to interpret it unless you know what the data looks like, the underlying data looks like. So here, for example, this point eight, you can see, if, if naively I was gonna draw a straight line through it, I would draw it there. And so automatically I can see that I'm expecting a positive correlation. With this data cloud here, I might just about put a line, negative correlation line through like that, but I'm also not sure that I'd believe it because there's quite a big spread in the data. And this one in the middle, I could draw a line in any direction through it, telling me that there really is no correlation. And we can look at this in... Uh, the wondrous SPSS. And so we'll just do this as a quick exercise uh, again to test the null hypothesis that there is no linear correlation between job satisfaction and weight. Because ultimately this is what we're trying to we're trying still trying to find out um, what these differences are amongst our, our stormtroopers and and it'd be really nice if we knew why. Now those briefly discussed, the causation is not something we're measuring directly, so we would have to be careful in that interpretation. So going back to the data and our analyze menu, if you look down the menu, you'll see that there is a correlate option. And remarkably, you'll find that under there are the tools to measure correlation. And so the first one is bivariate. Simply we have two variables. So you want analyze, correlate, bivariate. And the variables that we're interested in the degree of correlation are weight, and job satisfaction, actually, sorry, ignore that. No, it is this right. Weight and job satisfaction. If you put weight and job satisfaction in, you can also go to options. Can you? Actually, don't go to options. Oh, no, it's, uh, it's there. Okay, so you'll see correlation coefficient. Pearson, so that's the one that we've just talked about. So you just check Pearson if it's not checked already, and then you can uh, press OK, and that should give you a table with the Pearson correlation coefficient. Now this table, to interpret it, it at first it's a little, um, it's not immediately obvious what it's telling you. What it's plotted is um, every variable versus every other variable. So it's, it said weight versus weight has perfect correlation. It's funny that if you 
plot the same variable on both axes of a uh, graph, you get perfect correlation between them. Um, that's what you'd expect. I'm not. I, it makes no sense to me why you'd put that in, but they've decided that that may be useful. The one that you're interested in is weight and job satisfaction. You can also see that if you look at job satisfaction versus weight, so they've just done it the other way around, but it's exactly the same. Let me show you that. There. And there. Exactly the same value. So that value and that value. So that's the correlation coefficient. So we've got a minus sign in front of it, meaning there's a negative correlation. So there's um, satisfaction goes up, weight goes down in this case. But it's minus 0.152. So on that scale of minus 1 to 1, it's or minus 1 to 0, really, we're considering just the negative half. It's a relatively weak correlation. It's not. Um, it's not up at very close to one. So, it's, but, but, according to the p-value that we've got, it's a statistically significant correlation. So it's a weak. So the the two are weakly correlated. But that correlation is statistically significant. So we reject the null hypothesis that there is no correlation between weight and uh, job satisfaction and opt for some alternative. But if you plot the data, as I've done here, and you, uh, you, you can play with that in, in SPSS, you'll see that Okay, well, if I was going to draw a line through there, it's not immediately obvious the degree of correlation in there. I could draw a line, any, all sorts of lines through that data, some of them positive and some of them negative. And then we come up with that question, well, do I believe the correlation? Do I believe my p-value? And this is kind of why we have to set ourselves these thresholds, these significance levels and the p-values. It's because when we look at it, sometimes we just can't, we're not sure. So actually, it, we have to have some thresholds defined. So we set significance level, our test gives us a number, and then it forces us into a position of making a statement about what our results, uh, about the results that we get. We can then go on to discuss whether we even believe our own results. We're welcome to do that in our discussion of our work. But it at least sets uh, thresholds and definitions that we uh, will use to set the framework, uh, our analytical framework. Now, I so happen to know, because I generated the data, that there is a correlation in, in there um, built in. And actually, it is around that minus 1.5 point. So I know that the correlation really exists. And the p-value is giving me um, a lot of confidence in that. So when I sort of look back at it, because I generated the data and I created a model to produce this data, I can look back and say, actually, it does work quite well. And I'm quite impressed. I'm quite pleased that it, that it works as it does. But from an experimenter's point of view, where you don't know anything about the underlying distribution, we have to rely on the statistical results that come out and visualization. And so when I'm visualizing this, I would probably say I, I, need, I, I would like to do further work, because when I look at it, visually I'm not convinced, even though statistically it says that I should be.